guys, it's Michelle. So today is a tutorial, especially for those of you who have alopecia. Um, if you are interested to see how I've created these wee brows, which are more natural looking for me, for my usual, um, this tutorial has how to do brows. Then from that, then it'll be on to do just kind of liquid eyeliner. If you're, I can't even close my eyes, that one goes all funny. Um, yeah, then how to do some liquid eyeliner and how to apply eyelashes when you don't have your own, because it is a different technique if you have no eyelashes than when you have your own eyelashes. What I am going to do, I know I talk a lot, so down below in the description bar, if you're only wanting to see lash application, I will document the time that you can skip forward to for lash application or skip forward to just for eyeliner. First of all is the brows. So if you want to see the full thing, then by all means stay tuned. If you only want to watch a section, then just watch the section appropriate to your needs and that is great if you guys are subscribed already thank you so much if you're not then please do subscribe to the channel please give me a wee thumbs up um on my channel i've got playlists one is for makeup type tutorials one is on headwear one at the moment is on alopecia vlog which is like people have asked me to do chats on certain topics or issues or a wee bit about me. So you can just watch whatever you want to watch, check the playlists if you don't want to skip through everything. Um, all the products I use in the video, obviously I'm gonna link them all down below so you can really check out all of them. Um, yeah, that is that. So I hope this is okay for you guys. Um, on the video, I've actually taken them off now. I did have lower eyelashes, under lashes on. So if you want to see how to do that, that is also in the video, which is just about to come up. But at the risk of me sitting here talking all day to everyone, because I think we all know that I could do that, then I'm going to go. And I'm so excited. I forgot I had this MAC eyeshadow. I don't ever wear greeny eyeshadows. And I had this kind of greeny khaki one. And I just found it and I thought... I've got my Purity um, Brooklyn bamboo cap and my skin is so bad and look, I feel like I'm matching. I feel all colour coordinated. I'm feeling kind of awesome right now. <laughs> so guys, enjoy the video and give me any feedback. Hopefully this will be better quality video. I have recorded this on a 4K recorder. I have a better light but I don't have any backdrop. So let me know how it goes. I hope it's okay. I'm kind of learning as I go so please bear with me guys. Um, give me any suggestions of anything I can do and I will go now so enjoy the video I hope it's helpful I hope it's beneficial and I'll see you all soon bye hi guys it's Michelle so I have kind of like done my face base pretty much this is like an alopecia brow and um, eyelash as well was my plan so let's crack on with the brows so what I'm going to use is the Anastasia Beverly Hills dip brow the shade that I'm going to use just now is the Auburn which is a kind of warm brown type shade so I have my Morphe G29 brush I tend to use my Morphe G29 or one of my G21 Morphe brushes um, so what I'm doing is just popping that into the gel here just now and so what I'm going to do is try and make it look like hair strokes at the front um, and towards the back just have it it will be a bit more solid there and getting darker to the back so I will just crack on so my goodness my light is so bright i can hardly see what i'm going to do first of all is i'm not starting at the very inside basically your brow should start if you hold something at your nostril going up to the inner corner of your eye so that's where your brow should start i usually start mine a wee bit further forward however it's up to yourself um where your arch should be should be kind of if you were looking straight ahead kind of the outer side of your pupil so you can mark a dot for say the start of your brow Mark a wee dot for where your arch should be and decide yourself if you want it to be a high arch or you want it to be more straight and then your tail kind of going down. And what you generally do for the tail, if you were to say hold your brush from this point of your nostril here, go into the outer side of your eye and then, so say for me, I would mark a wee dot round about here. So that's just a kind of very basic guide. If you want to mark with dots first, sometimes that can help. Um, if you are well used to doing your brows or you change it up or whatever, then that is fine. You do what suits you. That's the kind of thing with makeup. I think it's so individual. It's very much up to what you feel you want to do yourself. So I'm just wanting to draw my tail today. Just kind of, I'm having it like this. Now I'm wanting to have this kind of bolder. I do draw the top line, not right along, but just there, because this part I'm gonna have quite bold. Nothing crazy, not bold as in like the bold brow tutorial I did, which is really crazy. So I am, I've got those lines, and then what I'm doing is basically just the products that's on the brush and that I've got from the lines, from that wee fine top line. See, although 
it's kind of solid, but it's not too bold harsh. Bringing it up from this bottom part here. And pushing up. And as there is a wee bit less product and less line here, then you'll get that kind of lighter towards the front of your brow. Now, if you just wanted to do that and have a bit of an ombre type brow thing going on, absolutely, you can do that. What I was going to do today was try and make it look more natural, like a few wee hair strokes kind of thrown into the mix. That's my plan. What we're going to do now, so I've kind of got that, um, I've done both brows here now, just kind of to not write as far in as I want them to start, but just kind of what, from say just in front of midway you could do your full brow of these kind of hair strokes that we're going to do just now so what i've done is just got this wee angled detailer brush now this is my morphe g29 it's really quite um a dense tipped brush and the benefit of that is it's quite solid so it's ideal for lines what to do i've just dunked it in the product i'll draw one quick line on my hand just to make sure the first line isn't going to be too thick now you're literally just drawing lots of wee lines and what I tend to do is like start from back here do them up the way and then angle them so it's almost as if you've got a wee point right here and um, that the hairs are going to come out of to try and make it look quite natural because you want it to give the impression um, that you do have actual brow hairs that's what we're trying to mimic here And it's up to yourself um, how much you want to do of this kind of hair stroke look. I quite like this. What I generally do is I'll do, I usually do quite a lot at the start and then have them almost look closer together that it's almost solid. And then I have my kind of bolder rest of my brow. But the kind of natural hair stroke appearance on the front. If you want, what I sometimes do as well is like you see this colour, this shade is the auburn on the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. Sometimes I will use Auburn and do quite a solid brow and use a darker shade. I'll sometimes just do hair strokes over the top with that um, to make it look like I do have brows, but I've used this over it, do you know, just to give that artifact, give that appearance as well you do have hair when actually you've got none. Um, so I'm just going to go and start these wee hair strokes over on the other brow just now. And hopefully I'm not holding my mirror in front of the camera. So again, your wee lines, and as you run out of product, just dunk back in again. I think you're best to kind of go light, then go too hard, because otherwise you need to just rub out and start again. If you make a mistake, you can just go back over with like foundation of legs. And you want to make sure your brows are kind of symmetrical-ish and matching and that you're happy with how they both look. So I think what I've done here is I've made that too straight. Natural hairs are not totally all one length and straight. So I've got lots of crisscrossy lines here and wee bits sticking up. Because that's how a natural brow would be. You would have some kind of texture there. So maybe I've gone a wee bit too high, but that's fine. Listen, if you do something like that, you can either increase the length of the rest of your fake hairs or alternatively you can just get a wee bit of concealer foundation whatever if you feel you want it straighter if you feel that there's any wee touch-ups to be done you can either go over them with the foundation or you can make the rest match or you can leave as is i'm wanting it to look kind of natural like as though there's hair there to give that appearance so that is kind of what i have done it's a kind of easy quick take on it um and now the next stage is to go to um eyeliner now um i 
tend to do the eyeliner thing a lot. I wear a lot of eyeliner. I always have, even before my alopecia. So what I'm going to do is pop on some eyeliner, um, and then we will. I've kind of I've not gone with the whole heavy eyeshadow today. I've not bothered with all that stuff because. The last, I tried to do an eyelash application tutorial before and when I did it last time I think I had so much black stuff all over my eyes it was probably difficult to see. What I would say if you guys have alopecia, if you have no hair and if you wear eyeliner and you are not sure what product to use, or I recommend you invest in the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. Um, in the UK it's available from Debenhams, you can buy it online. I'll pop a wee link down below in the description bar guys. It goes on easily, it's easy to use if you're new to use an eyeliner, it dries in quite quickly, it gives you lasting results for the day, it doesn't all start coming off in here, you don't have it all fading off, you don't have it feathering and moving, or if you're like me and I am mid-30s, I've got this extra skin, so it's easy to put on and it's, you know, it's, it's very flattering. So without further ado, I shall get on to application. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. With this, it dries quite quickly, which is good. It's not hard to work with. It stays nice and moist, the tip of this, um, which is lovely. It's You can do a nice fine line, you can do a thick line. It's very easy to work with. So what I do, if you don't have eyelashes, if you have alopecia like me, um, when people have lashes, most people, with they would go just over their natural lash line, fill it in. They don't need to worry about poking themselves in the eyeball because um, they have lashes there to stop that. I have poked myself in the eyeball a good few times doing eyeliner since I've had alopecia the last couple of years, um, which is amusing. If this does go in your eyeball, it does not irritate, which is really, really good. And if it goes in your waterline, it will stay there and it's great. So let's just go on with it. What I generally do is, I'll not do it too thick today, I always start off very fine here. So what I'm basically doing from the inner is mimicking the the darkness you would have with eyelashes on your actual lash line. So this is, for most people this would be the just exactly, that's, that's my lash line. So for people who don't have alopecia, these of eyelashes coming out of that part I've just drawn over. Okay. And where I start the actual kind of liner type thing is here. And make it a wee bit thicker as I go further up the lid. I'm just, as you see, I'm just doing this in small motions. And then what I do is fill it in. So get that line, I just do it in small sections. And then fill in what's underneath. So you've marked out your eye line and fill in the underneath. If you have super crinkly lids, with most eyeliners, something that I do I actually usually, I'm just going to the end here, I'm not doing wings at the moment. It can be easier if you do this and pull your eyelid straight just to see if you've got a totally straight line or not. I always do that to finish up and make it lovely and super sleek and smooth. So, but what I'm doing just now, just quickly, I've done that, go to the other eye. And again, just on this inner section here, it's very much along this lash line. And where, so that's like where my eyelashes would be coming out of if I had some. And then what I'm going to do is from here, so like, so I'm starting the eyeliner. What is easy, just do it in small sections, small bits at a time. Don't worry if it's not 100% smooth and whatever else, it's totally fine because you can always go back and make any corrections. I'm actually just putting this going right into my waterline here now <laughs> okay so you can have a wee look and see what you think when you're looking at that whether you think that your eyeliner is even or not and to make any wee amendments and any wee fixes that you want to do i'm going to thicken it up just that wee bit nothing major nothing crazy just ever so slightly. Okay, so when I'm quite happy with that, what to do if you want to do wings then on your eyeliner, you can do your wings. The most important thing with the wings is that, well, you need to be happy with them. You want them matching, you don't want them like... There are different tricks lots of people use to do that. Like some people use tape 
and line up the tape and go right there we go that's fine some people maybe kind of as though they've got tape just draw like with concealer a wee line up here on either side to mark it out and then they're then just kind of following that it's up to yourself what you want to do sometimes you can do just, you can do whatever you want just a small kind of turn under and flick a big cat eye type thing it's up to yourself i'm just going to do a very very small wing today i'm not doing anything i think i'm anyway and i'm going to go kind of straight out slightly up I'm not doing big wings today. I usually do do big wings. Do you know? I'm, I know what I'll end up doing. I'll do this and I'm, I'll, I'll live like this for about two hours. And then I'll end up going and doing big wings. Anyway, this was to be doing lash application. So, what I'm going to now is on to how I apply my eyelashes. So, what you will need for this is a set of eyelashes. And for today, I am using the Prima Lash number. I don't know if you can see that, number 37. The, uh, that st this style is absolutely gorgeous. Now I've just thrown them in the floor. Hi! So for a false lash application, um, I have my Revlon glue. I have my Prima Lash number 37 lashes. Now I'm going to do this in a bit of a wacky way. This is very much aimed at people who have alopecia and who do not have their own eyelashes. So you're going to probably look at me and think, oh my goodness, what is she doing? Why is she so crazy? Um, if you have alopecia, the technique for applying applications eyelashes, false lashes is slightly different than um, if you have eyelashes and I know that because I used to wear them when I had eyelashes and had just mastered it then my eyelashes fell out and I thought oh my goodness I don't know what I'm doing how do I put why can I not put on eyelashes and it would kind of upset me <laughs> so this is a kind of quick tutorial on how to do eyelashes if you have alopecia so what you'll see when anybody puts on false eyelashes people with lashes will Balance, not balance them but like they're sitting them against their own eyelashes their own eyelashes will maybe have mascara already on them or they'll be applying mascara so that will help to hold the angle of the lash one problem a lot of people with alopecia tend to encounter when applying false eyelashes is that even once they get them on they sit straight forward that's not any good or they start coming off in the corner they're heavy they're uncomfortable they poke them in the eyeball you know so there are different issues so with anybody whether you've got lashes or whether you don't what i would say is whatever lashes you are planning to wear get one of the lashes before you use it have a wee check of the lash and make sure it is the right size for your eye now that might sound like a silly thing give them a wee as well the reason i say that is because for the majority of people this is the lash i'm going to use for the majority of people, um, a lot of false lashes, strip lashes, are too long. And that results in poking the inside of your eye or the outside and they come off. They're very uncomfortable if they're not the proper size. So, easy way to check that. I have quite broad eyes and I'm a full lash girl, so um, I very rarely need to trim them. However, almost everybody I know has to trim false eyelashes. What to do? Hold the lash where it's going to be going, basically and the outside it shouldn't be it shouldn't be coming too far across it shouldn't be coming too far on the outside if it is too big always measure it from the inside and go so say for example this was too long and i went oh that's too long what you do for the upper lash strip if you have to amend the size of it you always cut the outside don't cut the inside and the reason for that is because the inside usually is made with slightly more sparse or shorter lashes for the inner corner so you don't want to be cutting them off and then it just looks crazy um if you have to cut top lashes i would say for top lashes always cut the outer side so let's say right now you have your lash it's good to go you're ready to go how do you get to actually applying it so what you will see people always do when they're applying false eyelashes is they get their glue so i have this revlon and apply it along the lash band here that's fine you can do that you can that is one way of doing it when you've got no natural eyelashes for an easier way to apply now if i was wanting these on like and i'm going to be say i wouldn't be wearing eyelashes doing sports i probably wouldn't be doing sports if i'm honest <laughs> but if i was going to be wearing them for somewhere if i was going out and it was going to be hot or if i was on holiday and i wanted extra secure protection i would pop some onto the lash band what I always do, now this is something that is especially good for people with alopecia, I get my glue 
This is where I apply my glue. I apply it straight onto my lid. This is why I like the Revlon. I know it does not irritate my extremely sensitive skin and extremely sensitive eyes. Now, if you have eyelashes and you do something like this, then you can end up getting the glue on your own eyelashes and it can be problematic. That's not an issue for us girlies who have bald eyes who don't have any eyelashes, hence what I'm doing. So, the reason and the rationale for me doing it this way is that when I apply my glue, I know exactly what the lash is going to stick to. If I don't glue up that lash and I've purely just glued my eyelid, then there only is one part for that lash to stick to. That's great. That makes things so much easier. So much easier because you don't need to worry about it then going in the wrong position because you have absolute control. The good thing about the Revlon glue, because this has the brush, or if you choose a different glue, if you choose one that has the brush applicator, makes this part of the process super easy. Now, in the UK, you can buy the Revlon um, glue and super jug and Boots Pharmacy. You can buy it in Asda. Morrison's, Sainsbury's, most places you can get it all over the place. Now, next thing to do is make sure you don't just go straight ahead and try and stick those lashes on. What you want to do is wait until that glue goes tacky. So, how do you know when your glue is ready? Because the big reason a lot of people find it's difficult to apply lashes as well, sometimes they'll say they just slide off, they can't get them to wait on. So, what you want to be doing is you want to make sure that's dry so once it kind of loses the blueness and the white kind of coloring then that's it starting to be tacky so what I do then is hold the lash totally upright not forward not like almost like it's pointing straight up the way okay and then you start from the inside find where it's going to sit so I'll have that here now you can use tweezers if you want if you don't want to use your fingers but I'm just using fingers because that's what I do you can buy lash applicators, which can be helpful if you go with this method of application. Fingers or tweezers tend to be fine. Now, that looks bonkers and that looks crazy, but now I want to kind of push that in. And as I do, it'll start to come forward slightly. That's why I'm saying put it on straight up the way, pointing upwards, because if you put it on the angle you want at, that's when they can fall forward and start to point straight ahead and you see them constantly. And that ain't good. That's not cricket. It's not fun for anyone. So I have them. They're nice and secure. And I am now just pressing against it. So it adheres. And it is. It's on. It's on already. And now I can just fix the angle of the lash. And that is how it will remain for the rest of the day. Now, I appreciate the fact that I have put on extremely full lashes. Um, these are not to everyone's taste. A lot of people. This is not what I would wear day to day. Actually... This style of lash I do love, but this is generally when I would use when I'm wearing like a lot of eyeshadow or eye makeup. I don't tend to wear it just with kind of plain eyes. So again, if you notice the way I put that on, it just kind of it was pointing straight upwards, straight up. So it looks crazy. They look like big spider lashes just now. Um, these are definitely fuller ones. They're beautiful. If you're be getting, if you're wearing eyeshadow or if you're going out. These are gorgeous. Now I just need to get them settled into place. Now because we wait till that glue is tacky, the lash band just adheres so nicely. So nicely. Now I... There we go. And you just sit them however you want. So that is them. That is how they are. Now I would generally already have a lot of eyeshadow and the likes one behind these. Day to day, I would not wear lashes that are this full and this thick, usually. What I would generally wear on a day to day basis, I would tend to wear just wispies, wispy lashes, which have got some length and they are lovely, but they are not um, over the top. What I'm going to do just now is show you something else that I have. They're called under lashes. Now, what under lashes are? Pretty much they are what they say they are. They are lashes for underneath. They are for your lower lid. Now I got mine, a Prima Lash as well. The big kind of known companies in the UK like Eyelure do make under lashes. The Eyelure ones I think are nice, but to me, what they look like and what you can actually also do if you have more 
well if you have any sort of eyelashes that you like you can use it with you can actually turn a normal set of eyelashes upside down and use them as under lashes however I like them to be a bit more understated says me that's got on the big massive upper lashes just now I apologize I'm about to put on ones that I've already used and not properly picked the glue off them it's bad 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 so anyway with these the ones that I have on the outside I don't know if you can see they have kind of thicker lashes for on the outer part that's just the design that I've chosen so for these ones if I was going to have to trim these I trim the inside of the bottom lashes outside of the top now I've just glued the eyelid rather than glue the actual lash tweezers are best for ensuring that is pressed on nicely and in place like so now I have a full set of eyelashes ah! okay if you find that you're not great at applying them what I tend to usually do um, I generally actually put some dark eyeshadow along my lower lash line just so that when like that one there I've not quite stuck that in the right place then if you've got darker eyeshadow along there it hides that there, that's better. So actually, where you start your top eyelash application from the inside, you're probably best to start the lower ones from the outside. And what I always, always do is get my Kat Von D eyeliner again. And then, this is what I say and then I can't find it. It's so typical, isn't it? Always when you say you're going to do something, you just can't find it, it's not to hand. I had it two seconds ago. Right, what I do with my eyeliner is then at that point, I want that to kind of match up there. So I just draw from the end of that onto my wee wing that I have. Link those in so that they look a bit more natural. And this is me with my false eyelashes. I hope this tutorial's been okay for you. Um, I don't actually wear lower lashes on a day-to-day -day basis. I usually only wear them if I was going out, but for the sake of the tutorial, I thought, let's just put them on and show you what they look like. So that is how to go from no hair to lashes, drawn on brows. And if you want, I have just, if you want, I have just popped on my human hair Trendsco wig this is my Trendsco gem collection diamond and i got this from simplywigs.co.uk so i've gone from bald barry to this glam so i've not even got on lipstick how bad is that let's pop some lipstick on uh, yeah it's my jeffree star lip ammunition and slip skin just in case you're wondering so there you go that's how to go from nothing to having drawn on your brows and for me that's more natural looking brow well natural made up brow not natural as in if I had on no makeup but if I was doing my makeup but wanted it to look more natural and not solid it's how to do some hair strokes and then we have the lashes and I've not even done eyeliner in my waterline. I'm going to do that. And if you have any comments, any suggestions, anything at all, just let me know. I will link the products that I've used in the description bar down below. Um, obviously, I've used them, so I would recommend them. Um, it's just I have tried a lot of products that are out there, a lot of products in the market. So this is just me based on products I like that work for me that's all I am doing is recommending to other people so if you have anything at all let me know um, and in the meantime have a wonderful day enjoy yourself I hope everything's going well I hope this tutorial's been okay I am sorry that it is a bit long-winded you know what I'm like I talk too much okay guys lovely to see you all and um, I'll see you all soon hopefully bye